it's an old spiritual gospel tune that I like to play. Ross has a new album out called Flight. It's uh, all solo acoustic. What inspired you to, to make uh, that record now or when you did? I've always been an acoustic guy, like at, mostly at home, you know. Um, and I, I don't know, I just I kind of wanted a, um, to document what it sounds like when I'm playing on my porch or, you know, in the kitchen or something. And, and so this record, we... Um, that I did, I, I did the whole thing on a little Zoom recorder. Right. You know, just put it in front of me and 
did it on location in various parts of the state and beyond. And um, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of it seemed like it, it kind of that's kind of who I am, I guess. And in, in terms of like um, more of a lo-fi kind of musician, you know, but it, it seemed to work. I mean, I didn't really want to do like studio time or anything like that. Just wanted to like more of a maybe an honest document of what it sounds like, because that's that's what I like to hear, you know. It's interesting recording an album on a Zoom because I think I would think on one hand it'd be very liberating because you can always, whenever you're inspired, you can always record something. Right. But I can also see it being somewhat of a burden because you can always record and it's like... You can, t- and, yeah. I was just wondering where you fell on that spectrum. I actually liked it. I, I thought it was pretty liberating. I, I, I really enjoy records or songs where I can hear, um, you know, background noises or traffic or birds or that kind of thing um and so i mean the zoom it's like it's 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 like you said i mean anywhere you are you can just turn it on and play so you there's a lot of that and i I don't know i mean it's it's there's no real sweetening of your sound or anything it's like i mean i guess you could but i i didn't really do anything to it i just kind of dumped it in and made the levels the same and then just put it out i mean it didn't add like a plate reverb or anything like that to it and i don't know it just it just seems like um the 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 free factor, the liberating factor of, of using a Zoom recorder uh, or a portable recorder to me just is was worth not being in like the studio environment where you can cre- you can make it perfect. Uh, you seem very committed to the idea of uh, instrumental music being mm-hmm. able to tell a very specific story. All right. And uh, I guess I, I was curious to know, you know, a little bit more about that process. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how whatever the story is in your head, how does it get translated to your fingers? I come from a, um, an improv setting, an Im- improv background. I mean, I, I've done a lot of records and projects of electric music where it's like, we're just like, we're gonna hit record, one, two, three, go. Let's see what we got. Uh, mm-hmm. That's good, on to the next record, right? Um, so so I, I don't feel very, um, I feel pretty comfortable in that in that setting, like whatever, it's kind of like having a conversation, I mean, you know, sometimes we'll start a subject and we can go around and around on that subject for a while. Sometimes it'll go off and something else. And, and I just, I feel music is that way for me. Um, so well, a lot of times when I'm playing solo, my songs will be, um, they'll have a central theme or maybe I'll have like a couple of bullet points or something I want to hit. Uh, but maybe the order is different. Maybe how I get there is going to be different. Well, was there any kind of learning curve associated with that? Like sort of being able to free your mind and and let ideas flow naturally? I I would imagine that's very difficult to start doing, you know, early on in a career. Doing it as a soloist is, uh, and then also on an an acoustic, I mean, acoustic, and and, and especially on a 12 string, I mean, you're, you're, you're faced with, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we have a pretty primitive piece of wood and strings, no matter how nice they can be. I mean, it's not like we're playing a synth or something, you know, so you have to, dealing with the, um, with the, the limits of the instrument. But I think the, the biggest thing is just to not be afraid, you know, not be afraid to, I mean, it's just you up here. So who's going to tell you that what you're playing is wrong? I mean, it's, it's what I want to do, you know? So it's not like anything, like if I'm playing in a pop band where it's like, okay, I have to remember verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Okay. Don't, don't F up, you know, but, but solo and, and, solo music that, that lends itself to a lot of improvisation. I mean, there's, there's nothing, there's no wrong answer. Um, I mean, you can sound bad, <laughs> you know, you can totally sound bad and that's its own thing. But I mean, just in terms of like composition or your approach, it, to me, it, it's, it's, as long as you're committed and you're not afraid, then that's where the real magic happens. I mean, I don't really want to know what's gonna happen in the tune um, every time. This is another um, spiritual, old traditional tune. Uh, this is going to be, um, I'm going to do a variation on Sinner Man.
I imagine like most uh, jazz guitarists, you, you kind of started with, you know, mainstream sort of straight ahead guys, your mm -hmm. Wes Montgomery, Grant Green, mm -hmm. people like that. Yeah. Um, and what was the first step you took sort of beyond that? Like who, who was the first musician that really saw you a different or showed you a different path that you can take? I got into a lot of um, improvised music, jazz and improvised music, a lot of free jazz, like John Coltrane or Pharaoh Sanders and Albert Eiler and all that. Um, and I, I, I really gravitated towards that because before I was a jazz player, I was really a blues guy. Like I was really into Buddy Guy and, um, you know, John Lee Hooker and, uh, I mean, all kinds of players, Melvin Taylor and just uh, a, a lot of different electric players that I, I really enjoyed. So to me, going into like an older free jazz um, uh, kind of music was where they took this blues tonality and, and it's more maybe more of an expressive kind of music in, in, in a jazz setting, in an improv setting. I got into that. So, um, so that was like, uh, did a lot of that, trying to translate that on electric guitar. So then, you know, I was into like Sonny Chirac and I was into James Blood Ulmer and Mark Ribot and Nels Klein and all these players. But at the same time, I mean, I've always been an acoustic guy too. So, I mean, like, I like to cross pick and I like to play banjo rolls and, um, so, you know, there's like Doc Watson and Robbie Basho and all these. I mean, so in a way, it's like there's always new players that I'm liking and trying to incorporate some of their, their style and hopefully make some of it sound like me. You recently started using a thumb pick. What inspired you to, to start using it and what that uh, process was like learning and getting comfortable with it? So I actually saw Daniel Bachman do it. I saw a video of him playing with thumb pick. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds awesome. You know, it's just, I mean, it, it, mostly I do it with the 12 string because it's such a, it needs that loud, you know, choir kind of sound, you know, with your overtones and stuff. And, and when I was playing with my thumb, um, you know, I would just, I would lose out, lose volume a lot in, in terms of what I wanted to hear. Like I, I definitely won't approach the, the 12 string with like my low string will be a drone a lot of times. Um, and I'm not really playing in an open tuning. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm playing in standard tuning, but sometimes I'll be playing over a low C, sometimes I'll be playing over a low D, sometimes I'll play a low E. And that'll be like my, I approach it like either banjo or bagpipes or something where there's just like mm -hmm. something that's gonna keep me harmonically centered. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to get that out, I, I started to do the thumb pick. And then, you know, I was, I was like, oh, okay, well I can, I can do a thumb pick with this and I can, if I put my hands like this, I can play it like a flat pick and you know, if you're trying to do like a detailed thumb pattern, and I'm used to doing it with my naked thumb, mm -hmm. it's it's a lot harder for me to do it with a thumb pick because it just feels like there's something in between. I mean, there is something in between my body and the and, right. the, and the string. So that kind of thing is um, is still I'm, I'm still trying to work on. Um, you know, alternating bass I can do okay, but but doing anything with like I, I don't know anything that that requires uh, a little bit more attention to detail is, is still tricky. You got your first guitar when mm -hmm. you were 12, mm -hmm. and your mom got it for you, is yeah, that right? Yeah, she did. What was it, do you remember? I got a Yamaha Classical. You wanted to be a drummer, right? I wanted to be a drummer. So yeah. <laughs> when when mom presented you with the Yamaha, what mm -hmm. was your reaction? I, I was happy to, to get something to play. Um, I wanted to play drums because I was a young boy in the suburbs, and I wanted to just beat stuff, you know, and, and, and rock out. Um, so, you know, I remember like I, I, I got my uh, guitar and, and I, I, at, like if, after a couple of months I was trying to learn like how to play Aerosmith or something on my, on my nylon string. Mm -hmm. And you can't really rock out on an Aerosmith on a nylon string, you know? So I was like, oh, this kind of sucks, you know? But then I got like a Washburn Electric and then, and then the Washburn Electric, I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. And, you know, and then, and then it's like everybody else. I mean, you just, you join a band, you take off, you know? And how many guitars do you own now? I think I've probably got about... Uh, seven or eight. I have a, I have this Martin and this is a, an old K. In my other acoustic, I have a Martin. Um, I have a 1960 or 61. Um, I have a 0018 that I play a lot uh, that I bought for my daughter who is four. But yeah. I bought for her to, because I'll give it to her like in 20 years. But I have a national arch top and, and you know, like a Dan Electro that I like for electric. And so, but you know, it's always, I always feel like it's not really in the instrument so much. I'm not a huge fancy, fancy instrument kind of guy because it's, I feel like it's more in your hands and, you know, hopefully I'll sound like me with whatever. Now, if, I don't know if it's a, if it's a, 
I mean, it has to play. Your instrument has to be able to, to be playable and stuff. But um, but I think there is there's something to be said for sounding like you, no matter what you play. Okay, this this next piece I'm going to do is is one of my own, and it's written for um, the lady that hid Anne Frank in her house in uh, World War II. This song is called "For Meat Geese." <laughs> 